Welcome back. You're so watching The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa to a very important discussion now um, as Lagos and other parts of Nigeria uh, saw queues at petrol stations for a fifth consecutive day and car owners were left with damaged vehicles after the supply of 371 million litres of dirty fuel to petrol marketers in the nation. The nation's lower national legislative house, the House of Representatives, has asked the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited um, to suspend companies responsible for the importation of the said bad fuel. Um, however, this has led some to ask who the House of Representatives is referring to since the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited has always said, at least since 2007, when Ibe Kachiku was the Minister of State for Petroleum, that it, the NNPC, or the SWA NNPC, um, is the sole importer or importer of fuel into the country. Well, yesterday, after, you know, uh, more than 48 hours of this issue, you know, coming up, the group managing director of the NNPC Limited, Mr. Melikari, named some companies whom he said were responsible for bringing the fuel, the dirty fuel, uh, which was mixed with high amounts of methanol into Nigeria, uh, saying Nigerian authorities do not test imported petrol, petrol for methanol. And we'll be looking at this uh, later with uh, an analyst. But this is, you know, led to some questions. For instance, where did we get it all wrong? And it's an important question to ask. You know, Mercy, um, this has been an ongoing conversation since Monday uh, with the queues popping up. Um, I, I first saw the a queue on Monday in a cab heading um, to some other part of um, um, Lagos, Sikoi. And just after Falomo, I saw a uh, hold up. And I'm not used to seeing hold up there. So I said to the taxi driver, what's going on? He said, it's a traffic light. So we queued behind the cars. But after a while, the thing wasn't moving. You came out and saw that it was a queue for a petrol station that was across on the other side of the road. You know, and, um, and we're seeing the government agencies coming up with statements that, for me, um, are, are, for want of a better term, an, um, an insult on the collective intelligence of Nigerians. Um, and they, they took their sweet little time. To, to speak to Nigerians, um, the NMPC, which says it is the sole importer of petrol into the country, um, waited till yesterday, Thursday, to, to talk to Nigerians. Today is Friday, right? Yeah, waited till yesterday, <laughs> Thursday, to talk to Nigerians. It happens, it happens, mercy. Um, and why wait that long? Now, we go to the, the statement of the, the regulatory authority that um, replaced the DPR, which was the SWA regulatory authority, and the PPPRA. Um, the Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Regulatory Authority. Um, it, th that statement that was released, first of all, there was no apology to Nigerians. You know, secondly, it tried to downplay the situation by telling Nigerians that a limited amount of, of PMS was affected. And that, that for me, is, 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 is an insult, you know, I'm sorry to say, but an insult on the intelligence of Nigerian petrol uh, consumers, or those who buy petrol in this country, limited amount. So you're going to tell the, the individual whose car that is the only thing he or she may have as an asset has gone bad, or for those who took loans, bank loans to buy those cars has been destroyed, that a limited amount of fuel is involved. That, that is an insult. Then secondly, you now lie to Nigerians, they're telling them that methanol is, is a regular additive to petrol, but it's added in, in, in um, acceptable amounts, really. Now we're hearing the truth, which a lot of people who did some, like I, you know, you know did some investigation. No, that, that was a lie by a government agency which is taxed with the responsibility of policing, of regulating the midstream and downstream, telling Nigerians a lie that methanol is a regular additive to petrol when Nigerian specification of petrol does not accept methanol. Even MRS put out a statement yesterday and said the same thing. And the NNPCDG is also saying that they don't test for it. So why would a government regulatory authority be lying to Nigerians? And, and this is a sackable offense, sorry, to be this, because people's cars I, I, have gone bad. It's a sackable, and, 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 and so it just makes Nigerians wonder, is this how government in the country takes the citizens for a ride and takes the citizens for granted? You know, because if you really, as government, as a government agency, you respect the people, you see yourself as serving the people, you will be profusely apologizing for what is happening and not 
talking and acting as if you don't owe the people an apology or the truth so, or an so explanation. In all, in, in all of this, you ask yourself, where's the Minister of Petroleum Resources? I mean, you ask who is the minister, and that's the president. Yeah. The president who oversees this, uh, you know, sector or this ministry has not come out to say anything. And if, if, if things actually happen, go on like this, the, the, the minister should be held responsible. I mean, with, without any sentiment here. But unfortunately, it is what it is. Over time, you ask yourself, you've talked about, I mean, you have actually done the nine years of the conversation here. We have yeah. a body who should regulate police and ensure that we have the right products. But what it is, what, what is it that we're experiencing is the fact that uh, Nigeria, Africa over time will have become a dumping ground for all of these junks. And so it's the level of impunity that we constantly see. And the fact that nobody's taking responsibility, and then it's okay, you know, to say, yes, you have named this person. Because you also have the NMPC saying, well, we're naming, and now the House of Reps is saying you need to probe for that. But, you know, would this just be just a statement? Are we going to see actions? Would people pay for all of this? And how did we even get to this point? Were we getting it wrong? In the first instance, um, you also, you, you remember this morning, we talked about the fact that uh, uh, there's also a budget from the NMPC trying to, you know, take out or sift out the bad products, the bad oil. And that's that's going to be a lot. So why should we even be delving into this in the first place if we had our refineries functional? Do we have any business exporting you know, our, our products and trying to import it back? Yeah. So uh, this is some of the a, questions we're hoping to yes, you know, uh, answer. Yes, Ladui is, is on, uh, with us now. Um, she's a, a lawyer. Follow Shade, good morning to you. Can you hear us, please? Okay, we, we're still trying to connect with her. And once we do that, we'll, we'll put it on there. Mercy, you, you've said it all, you know. And the, the saddest part of this, one of the sad aspects of this. Uh, uh, are you there, please? Can you hear us? Okay, uh, we'll try and get a technical team on it and see if we can get the connection right. Um, so one, one of the, the sad aspects of this is that, um, uh, you know, the opaqueness of the oil and gas sector in Nigeria you know, has come to the fore again. The fact that these guys have controlled this sector as if it's um, their, their personal um, uh, thing. They are handling this oil and gas and petroleum and all that as for Nigerians, in the interest of Nigerians. The money of Nigerians is used to subsidize and to pay for this. Nigerians pay through their noses for fuel every day. It's not free. Even the one that is used to subsidize is still government money. And so it, 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 the opaqueness and the lack of transparency by those who are um, supervising and overseeing the petroleum industry in Nigeria, you know, shrouded in secrecy. I mean, till now, Nigerians do not know who exactly now, we don't know who is, who is importing fuel into the country. We don't know. I mean, you, you okay, so look, look at it. There's two, let me not use the word, but look at the, the funniness of this, this whole situation. You're saying, as NNPC, that you are the sole importer of fuel into the country. Now, you are telling the country that some importers of fuel are responsible. So, so I mean, does it make sense? And now you're passing the buck and naming some names that people don't know. Okay, we, do we have a guest on the line? No, no, we, we just move on. Yeah, you know, so we, 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 we're, hearing, we're hearing names that people don't, we have to go. You know, but, but there's a lot, you know, surrounding this that if it's exposed will mean that a lot of heads will roll. You know, and people have turned this country that was, you know, founded by a company and Nigerians took back their country and said, we want independence and placed in the hands of people as leaders. They have now turned this country back to their own private company. You know, because at it's, the end of the day, uh, if you look at it, to be very honest, and this is a conversation that we're not ready to have up until this moment, we constantly talk about Nigeria that was set up, you know, as a business because it was a business. That hasn't changed anything. It feels like the transaction is still ongoing and constantly you see Nigerians being shortchanged. You ask yourself, the fact that we have adulterated products in the market, is that the reason why we don't have the, you know, the product available? Is that the reason for the hoarding of the products? And if, at what point did you realize that you had adulterated products in the chain, in Absolutely. the supply chain? At Absolutely. what point did you come out with the statement? Was it up until some of Nigerians actually came up, you know, with a lot of outcry? But however, the, the conversation will continue right here. Our fingers are crossed and we see how all of this pans out. And that's how we end the conversation on Friday.
If you missed out on any part of it, it's all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We're Plus TV Africa. And on YouTube, do subscribe. It's a Plus TV Africa lifestyle. I am Messi Bopo. Do have a fantastic day. My name is Kofi Bartels. Have a fantastic weekend. We'll be back on Monday. Good morning.